So that's the reason why the concept of losing loft around the greens is what I push big time. Lose the loft, get rid of the loft, unless you absolutely need it. You've got to fly something. What we've got here is the next circumstance. So basically, if the little flow chart we've got about how to choose what shot to play, can you putt it? Which means that you've got a good line that's nice and smooth and run the whole way, yep, putt. If you can't do that because you've got a bit of a rough light sitting down, then it's putting with loft, so you're trying to hit it up and onto the grass with your five wood, with your hybrid, with your three wood, but you're using your putting techniques to get it. And then the next thing is, oh, I can't really do that because I've got rough in the way. It's not going to run through this rough here. So you can see we've got probably two, three metres worth of rough. Then we've got fairway for about 10 to 15 metres, and then we've got five metres of green. So the thing that we're still doing is we're not going the sand way through. Main reason is when you take a more lofted club, you need to make a bigger swing to hit it further, right? So if we've got a sand wedge or a lob wedge in our hand, we're going to have to make quite a big swing to get that there. And the issue with that is contact. The bigger the swing you make, you're more likely to make bad contact, catch it thin, catch it fat. If you put a sand wedge thin from here, making that big swing, that's the one that goes flying all the way over the back of the green. Like thin. Yeah, basically. So by having something like an 8-iron, 7-iron, 9-iron, we're going to do a little chip and run, bump and run, something like that. Basically, what the thing is with that is because we've got less loft, you don't need to make as big a swing. So if we get the contact slightly wrong, the difference between a good one and a bad one won't be as big. Right? So we're very evident, evident with the um, hybrid. If you, you hit one in the middle of the ball and you hit a good one, they almost go the exact same distance. Not quite, you know. So with this one, what we're going to do is we're just basically using the same kind of chipping technique that we were doing with Sambo yesterday. So feet together, weight forwards, and we're just going to turn our body back and through, mostly using hips, a body turn not so much hands and we're absolutely not trying to lift the thing up in the air we're trying to hit that imaginary nail in the back of the ball hit it that way get the face to hit that nail in the back of the ball and let your loft get in the air all i need to do here is probably fly the ball maybe about one third of the distance and then it should run probably about two thirds of these i've got my feet together i'm brushing the ground on the way through this is a swing of a club that we go back and through like a good pendulum there i'm counting out a good tempo so that's kind of one, two, one, two tempo. And I imagine I'm going to land this probably about four paces down there with that sort of swing, and we're going to see what happens. And it's probably landed about that four paces down, run through the little valley, just got on the green. Now, expectation wise, what would you think about that? Is that inside our two putts or? It is, isn't it? Just anywhere on that green there from here is actually a really good shot. Now, at my level as a golf pro, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably a 5 out of 10. But I need to make up and downs a lot more, right? So I'm learning from that going, oh, yeah, I just didn't quite hit that hard enough. So I'm going to do another one here and just go a little bit bigger. See how we go this time. That's going to be a bit better. So that's one now. What's that going to feed? Ooh, it's inside my one puff circle, right? So that's going to allow me to get down in two, but for you guys, try and break 90, try and break 100, you don't need to get down in two. You just got to make sure you don't get down in any worse than three. And if it happens in a good one like that or a good putt, then you're down in two, half your days, and you're ahead of the game, you're ahead of both of you guys. So, so once again, the technique, 9 iron, 8 iron, 7 iron, it's okay because they're all like modern day irons, very different lofts. So this is an 8 iron, it's reminding me of my 6 iron from 20 years ago, 25 years ago. But feet together, using my body I'm maintaining this Y that I'm used to, that I'm swinging the club with like that. In fact, in first, I'm doing body turn. I'm just checking where I'm brushing the ground so I get my ball position right. And then I'm back through just like that. And you can see there, that that's another one inside my one plus circle. Things are looking good. Now, I'm going to give you a demo here. We'll make the same size swing back and through. But on purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch it thin. I'm going to hit leading edge, middle of the ball like that, right? So I'm going to catch it thin. We're just going to see how far it goes, okay? It's the same size swing, back and through. Oh, I just chopped it rather than thin. <laughs> First one. <laughs> so the thing with that is I got lucky through this grass. That's not always going to happen. Though. But just because it was an 8 iron and not a sandwich, the difference between the bad one and the good one's like, Hardly anything. So that's the reason why the concept of losing loft around the greens is what I push big time. Lose the loft, get rid of the loft, unless you absolutely need it. You've got to fly something. It's just not going to run along the ground. You've got to get over. That's it. Over we go.